and a very warm welcome to all the viewers firstly i would like to wish all of you a very happy prosperous and healthy new year so in this year we are going to continue first with the infectious disease epidemiology and the disease which we are going to look at today is chickenpox chickenpox is also known as varicella and it derives its name from the causative agent that is the varicella zoster virus also known as vzv this disease is acute in nature highly contagious has got a capacity to spread from one person to other very fast and is characterized by a vesicular itchy rash as we can see in the photographs here the rash spreads very quickly to all parts of the body and is associated with constitutional symptoms like malaise and fever which occur in most of the viral infections let's move on to the epidemiology of chickenpox chickenpox occurs worldwide in temperate climates it affects mostly children less than 10 years of age however in tropical climates what happens is the epidemiology of chickenpox is not quite clear because it's not only the children but also young adults who show zero negative results uh, is very common when we talk about travelers those who are non-immune that means those who have not suffered from chickenpox when they were children or those who have not been vaccinated they have a high risk of acquiring the infection if they are traveling to a zone which is highly endemic for chickenpox let's look at the epidemiologic triad of chickenpox so in this trial we are first going to look at the agent the causative organism which is varicella zoster virus and it belongs to a subfamily of alpha herpes viridae this virus has got a predilection for nerve root ganglia so what happens is once a child acquires the virus it will go and produce primary as well as secondary viremia and this virus will then remain dormant attached to the nerve root ganglia in future if the immune status of the person is compromised this virus can get reactivated to what we call as causing zoster or shingles and it mostly occurs in adults because the virus has to remain dormant and then it gets reactivated so chickenpox and zoster are actually two different host responses to affection by a single agent that is varicella zoster virus let's look at the host factors primarily as i said earlier it affects children who are less than 10 years of age a person having an attack of chickenpox that means suffering from the symptoms and signs of chickenpox generally will not have a second attack so one attack will provide a durable immunity what is important is if a pregnant woman suffers from varicella zoster infection it's likely that her unborn fetus is also at a risk of suffering from chickenpox the severity of the disease in terms of the appearance of the rash as well as other symptoms is much more if a person acquires chickenpox infection in adulthood looking at the environmental factors overcrowding and seasonal variation are two important considerations overcrowding in places with ill ventilation is going to allow the transmission of the virus from one person to other in the tropical areas mostly there is seasonal variation so in um, at times when it is very cold and people prefer to stay indoors what will happen is the prevalence of the infection will increase let's look at the chain of infection for chickenpox so we have the reservoir who is a person who is suffering from chickenpox the case who is able to transmit the agent to the susceptible host the person who has not acquired the infection and the way or the mode of transmission of the virus to the susceptible host is mainly through direct droplet infection which is through aerosols through activities like coughing sneezing or talking through which aerosols are generated and they can be transmitted from the reservoir to the susceptible host another mode of transmission is through direct contact now direct contact is the way of transmission whereby the vesicular fluid which contains the virus if it comes in contact with the skin of the susceptible host it can cause 
transmission of the virus to the susceptible host. There is one more mode of transmission of the virus from the reservoir to the susceptible host and that is through indirect contamination of the articles used by the case or the person suffering from chicken pox. And if this article is touched or is used by the susceptible host immediately after the virus has been um, acquired on that particular object, it can result in infection. But it is a less common mode of transmission, so it has not been mentioned on this slide. But we have to remember that indirect spread is also possible through contaminated articles or what we call as fomites. Generally, when we consider the spread of infection from the reservoir to susceptible host, we consider this as person to person spread. So directly through activities of coughing, sneezing or direct contact of the vesicular fluid, the virus can be transmitted to the susceptible host. Let's look at the clinical course of chickenpox. Chickenpox is um, considered in two stages. The first stage is known as the pre-eruptive stage because we said that this is an exantheme or this is a disease characterized by rash. So we have a pre-eruptive stage and eruptive stage. Pre-eruptive stage means the stage before the rash actually appears and it is characterized by symptoms like fever, malaise, back pain which last for about 24 hours. This generally is for children. However, for adults, this prodromal stage or this prodromal illness lasts for a longer period that is around two to three days and it is quite severe. The person is unable to get up and the person will have very high fever and malaise. It is followed by eruptive stage. So eruptive stage means basically appearance of the rash. As far as children are concerned, generally they would show up with rash as the first sign and the rash would come up immediately after the fever comes in most of the cases. Let's look at the characteristics of the rash. Now, understanding the rash of chickenpox is very, very important because we need to differentiate this rash from other conditions in which rash is present. The rash of chickenpox is symmetrical in nature. It will occur on both sides or around um, the body. It first appears on the trunk and then it spreads to the face, arms as well as legs. Axilla is affected in most of the cases of rash of chickenpox. However, the palms and soles are seldom affected. This rash has got a predilection for the flexor surfaces of the body more than the extensor surfaces of the surfaces of the body. Now, so one another characteristic of this rash is that when we look at the rash of chickenpox in a person, it will show you all the stages advancing from macule, papule, vesicle and scab. This is because the rash quickly advances through all these stages and secondly, it occurs in crops. So there are crops of eruption of the rash which occur because of which we can see all the stages of the rash at one time in one individual. And this characteristic of the rash of chickenpox is known as pleomorphism or pleomorphic nature of the rash. As you can see in the photograph here, there are few vesicles wherein you can see the vesicles which contain clear fluid whereas here there are others which are papular in nature where you they look more solid as compared to this kind of this stage of the rash. So this is a very important feature of chicken pox. When you look at a person suffering from chicken pox you should be able to have a look at various stages of the rash. So this is what is known as pleomorphism. Let's look at the incubation period of chicken pox. Once the virus gains entry into the body of the susceptible host, it will take around 14 to 16 days until the appearance of the rash. But it has been observed that the incubation period can be as um, wide as 10 to 21 days. So, But usually we have 14 to 16 days. Period of infectivity or what we call as period of communicability, which is very, very important for the control of the disease is one to two days before appearance of rash and four to five days thereafter. What is important is, as we said earlier, that the vesicular fluid can be one of the mode of transmission for the virus. What happens is once 
the lesion gets crusted or a scab formation occurs, the person will no longer remain infective because it is only the vesicular fluid which contains the virus. Once the vesical phase goes away, the virus is not going to be there in the rash or the, in the stage of rash. So, once the lesions are crusted or scab formation occurs, the person is no longer infectious. And for the scab to occur, it generally takes around 4 to 5 days. And that's why we have considered the period of infectivity to be 4 to 5 days after appearance of the rash. Complications of chickenpox. Now, these are quite important because a person who gets complications of chickenpox has got a higher mortality as compared to another person who Get, recovers from chickenpox. Generally, this disease is self-limiting and it will usually he, go off on its own. However, in people who have got a low immunity or have got low immune status, it can have secondary bacterial infection. So, the common complications which occur mainly in children is pneumonitis or encephalitis and invasive group A streptococcal infections. Now, these are quite important because streptococcal infections uh, in itself can cause lot of problems to the child with reference to nutrition and immunity. Now, as I said earlier, this virus is going to remain latent in the neural ganglia and upon subsequent reactivation, the varicella zoster virus can cause shingles or zoster which affects mainly immunocompromised individuals or elderly individuals. So, this is another complication which we consider of chickenpox. Maternal varicella can cause fetal wastage. So, th there can be abortion or if the child is born, it can have birth defects if the mother has suffered from chickenpox. Let's move on to the control and prevention of chickenpox. First, we start with control. So, the control of chickenpox involves things like notification of the cases, isolation of case for about a week after the onset of rash to cover the period of communicability, disinfection of articles which are soiled by the nasal and the throat secretions of the infected person, and symptomatic management of cases. Antivirals have also been used to manage um, a case of chickenpox, mainly it is acyclovir which is used so that the case is treated and complications are prevented. Those who get complications like having streptococcal infection, antibiotics may have to be used in order to achieve control of the disease. As far as prevention is concerned, we have two areas which we need to talk about. One is passive immunization and other is active immunization. Passive immunization is achieved with the help of varicella zoster immunoglobulin also known as VZIG and it is indicated for use in highly susceptible varicella zoster virus exposed immunocompromised or immunosuppressed populations. Now, why do I say this? Immunoglobulin of varicella zoster can be used for people who have got a low immune status or who are immunocompromised because in these individuals, there is no point in giving the varicella zoster vaccine because there is no immune status which they have. And the high-risk groups which we considered having low immune status are immunocompromised children and adults, newborns of mothers who have had chickenpox infection shortly before or after delivery, premature infants, infants who are less than one year of age, adults without evidence of immunity and pregnant women who are at a risk of suffering from chickenpox or who have had a contact of chickenpox. In all these groups, we have to give varicella zoster immunoglobulin. Now, this vaccine has to be given within 72 hours of exposure. So, if any of these high-risk groups have come in contact with a case of chickenpox, they have to be administered with varicella zoster immunoglobulin. And this immunoglobulin is administered by, via the intramuscular route of administration. The second part of prevention is active immunization and this is achieved by varicella zoster vaccine. Now, this is a live attenuated vaccine because of which we cannot administer it in the immunocompromised people because it is live in nature. And this vaccine is only recommended for active immunization. For children, the recommended dose is a single dose uh, between the age of 12 to 18 months. Now, in the World Health Organization immunization schedule, 
this vaccine is an additional vaccine which has been recommended and it is not provided free of cost in the immunization programs carried out around the world so it is the role of pediatricians or the people who are the caregivers to children that they advise the parents to have their children vaccinated with chickenpox vaccine within the age group of 12 to 18 months for all those who are you know older than 13 years or adults as we call the recommended doses of varicella zoster vaccines are two doses um, in a four to eight week interval so one month or two months interval for all the adults who are susceptible to suffering from chicken pox now what happens is the effectiveness of this vaccine it wanes over time so the immunity will go down it will be uh, as high as 97 percent in the first year after vaccination to 84 percent at eight years post vaccination so that's why even the adults in tropical areas as we have discussed earlier have shown zero negative um, conversion because the vax the immunity may have been waned off after a certain period after they have been vaccinated so that's all from me about chickenpox thank you very much please do subscribe and keep watching have a great year